Sego, Sego, Skanangoa, Malika Wairi, Yonkiats. Amaligad Hakas Masque, Hodnashone, Ganyangahaga, Ganawage, Migma, El Siko Guk, Migmagi, Gespukwich, Wakaho, Oswego Tikarando. Hello, I carry the peace, and my name is Malika Wairi, and my spirit name is the one who stands and walks in the light. And I am from the people of the Longhouse, the people of the Flint. Haudenosaunee, Ganyangahaga. My Ganyangahaga territory is Ganawage, the rapids of the south side of the shores of what is now known as the St. Lawrence River near Montreal, Quebec. I'm also Mi'kmaq and my traditional unceded homelands of the Mi'kmaq are that of the Bear River in the region of Gaspukwich, the last flow, which is what we now know as Nova Scotia, Canada. I'm Wolf Clan, and I'm coming to you from Titkarando, where the trees stand in the water, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is the original homelands and territories of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Three Fires, and the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabek. And we're about to indigenize. Do you speak on this land? This is indigenous land, do you speak? Do you speak on this land? This is our home. On native land, do you speak? Do you speak on this land? This is stolen land, occupied land, land under siege. Do you speak? Do you speak on this land with your foot above ground, above our burial mounds? Do you speak? Do you speak b -b -b broken treaties? B -b 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 broken promises, but breaking spirits, do you speak? Do you speak white noise, st 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 static, so sterile it is sterilizing the natural flow of our blood memory, like receding ice caps from oceans to seas, to rivers, to brooks, to creeks, do you speak or do you leak? false truths, like pipelines built in 1952, spewing toxins so poisonous, it's altering our social consciousness. Do you speak? Do you feel before you speak? Or do you think before you speak? Because the heart should lead the head, but instead your head leads your heart. That's why when you speak, things fall apart. Do you speak? Nah. You just talk a whole bunch of shh. And for centuries and centuries and centuries, you've been fertilizing it. Well, today I'm not going to speak. I'm going to teach. I'm not going to speak. I'm going to preach. I'm not going to speak. I'm going to reach back seven generations to my ancestral legacy because I come from a people who don't speak. We are speak. We be that crazy, sexy, cool speak that got you on that teepee creep trying to appropriate what we did originate because our stories are encased in the plates of a turtle shell. That's why we are the backbone of this nation. Our stories are prophecies foretold. That's how we have withstood more than 500 years of colonial domination. Our stories are forged and femifested through light, sound, and story, not a personification of egotistical, patriarchal glory. Our stories are an act of sovereignty, a reclamation of space, disrupting white privilege and dismantling systemic hate. Our stories inflate our lungs with language, laughter, and love, language, laughter, and love so that we don't suffocate. You buried our stories, forgetting they were seeds, our ancestors' promise, and our elders' dreams. You see, stories is the legacy that we leave, chapters sung and drummed into all reality, like the weaving of our wampums and our syllabics etched in granite and our souls wrapped in sacred birch bark scrolls. Our stories are an act of creation, Mama Earth's gestation, that's why we rise from the root and are destined to bloom truth. 
Our stories never die. Our stories never die. When we came into this existence, we were already gifted with our narrative. So when we transition to Galoon, Hayagay, the place in the sky, we know someone will inherit them. So I ask you again, do you speak on this land? This is indigenous land, our home on native land. Do you speak? Do you speak on this land? This is stolen land, occupied land, land under siege. Do you speak? Because the next time we meet, don't speak. Shh. Just listen. And maybe, just maybe, I will share my story. Indigenize this. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. <laughs> yeah. I slaughtered the human, resurrecting my being, restoring my nature back to nature to be nurtured by Mother Earth. And then I transmuted into seeds, metamorphosized into our sustenance. And my soul, my soul photosynthesized as stars. Because you see, over 90% of our body mass is in fact stardust. Then my subconscious evolved into the universe, brain cells bursting free from societal brainwashing, migrating microaggressive migraines like meteors across the plains of the galaxy. Nebulous ribbons, third eye vision, nebulous ribbons, third eye vision, amplifying new insights. Imprints of double helix embedded within the Milky Way affirm that the future was already encoded within my ancestral DNA. Axota Asuntani Garakwa, Grandmother Moon is the resting place for souls that transition to Galun Hayage, the place in the sky, but you call it space. Yet she fills us up with strength and direction. And through her lineage, we be femifestin like hearts of nations. Because when a woman's heart lays on the ground, a nation will fall and we are falling. We are falling like clear cutting in the forest and nobody hears our sounds. There is no peaceful silence. There is no green peace, only green violence. It's a war against the world, spiritual versus material, material versus spiritual, cloaked in cultural appreciation as you burn our villages down with the sacred fires of our nations. Voracious vegan appetites captured on Google satellite, forging our medicines beyond what you need, seeding capitalistic greed, leaving only dead wood and weeds while we sit in horror as money literally grows on trees. And those of us on the front lines are bulldozed to the sidelines to make way for pipelines, which have become the bloodlines and the lifelines of oil to blood and blood to oil, oil to blood and blood to oil. What has happened to humankind? That's why I slaughtered the human, resurrecting my being in order to reassemble my humanity, like the weaving and beating of treaty. That's why I long to return. I long to return to a parallel pathway. As long as the grass is green, as long as the rivers flow, as long as the sun rises in the east and sets in the western glow, I will slaughter the human so I can reclaim my soul. Nyawagoa, Wolong. Sego, Skanangoa, Malaika Wairi, Omaligad Hakasmasque, Yonkyats, Hodnishtone, Ganyan Gahaga, Migma. Elsid, Gogak, Wagaho, Oswego, Tid Karando. So again, um, it's so great to be back with you. Hello. I carry the peace 
And my name is Malika Wairi. My spirit name is the woman or the one who stands and walks in the light. And I am from the people of the Longhouse, the people of the Flint, Haudenosaunee, Ganyan, Gahaga, as well as Mi'kmaq from the Bear River. I'm Wolf Clan, and I'm coming to you from Teet Karando, the One Dish, One Spoon Wampum, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, which is the original territory and homeland of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Anishinaabeg Three Fires, as well as the Wendat and the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabeg. Young Gangwe, eh, eh, Young Gangwe, Young Gangwe, Young Gangwe, eh, eh, Young Gangwe, Young Gangwe, Young Gangwe, eh, eh, Young Gangwe, Young Gangwe, Young Gangwe, eh, eh, Young Gangwe, eh, eh. Someone accepted his apology and bestowed him with a headdress. And as he addressed us, we bowed our heads in silence as if the missionaries' missions to misconstrue, miseducate, misappropriate had been reinstated by the state and a Haudenosaunee state of mind had turned into a New York state of mind, Yangangwe. We were royal subjects to be subjugated. They said the only good Indian was a dead Indian and a killing the Indian inside, so it shouldn't be any surprise that we are dead to them. Walking artifacts, fossilized federal feudalism, and yet resistance is never futile, Yangangwe. You see, back in the day, back in the day, back in the d -d 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 day, our warriors, our ancestors on the battlefield would cry, today is a good day to die, today is a good day to die, but that was then, and this is now. And now it's the young Gangwe, the warrior women who begun to rise as we march in solidarity side by side and circumcise our circumstance and dance and dance and dance Round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows, nobody knows. Young Gangwe. It was a young Gangwe in Odawa, on Victoria Island, who was willing to starve to death, who was willing to starve to death so her people could meet at a table where bread should be broken if only the integrity of treaty was spoken. Treat we justly. But they rather see us wounded on knees, unable to stand. Unable to stand for equal rights and justice, unable to stand for indigenous rights and justice, unable to stand for justice for all, not just us, young Gangwe. They exonerate the lies and gas, mass, hide the truth, bleach, blanch the truth. But the truth is, the truth is that our prayers are smudging our songs. Our prayers are smudging our songs. A nation wants to build and will build again, young Gangwe. You see, this is not a rebellion or even a revolution. This is an abolitionist dream, which is not an illusion. This is prophetic evolution. And if we haven't learned one thing by now, we should know that when a young Gangwe speaks prophecy, we need to listen to we, we need to listen to we, young Gangwe. The spark has been lit. The eighth fire is rising, humanizing all four sacred directions, 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 reclaiming balance, balance, reclaiming, claiming balance, balance, reclaiming young Gangwe, 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 eh, eh, young Gangwe, eh, eh, young Gangwe, young Gangwe, young Gangwe, eh, eh, young Gangwe, young Gangwe, young Gangwe, eh, eh, young Gangwe, young Gangwe, young Gangwe, eh, eh, young Gangwe, eh, eh. And now it is my honor to introduce from the film Warrior Women. Marcy, Beth, and Madonna. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day, y'all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 